want to take some time today to answer some of your email questions. And Pat, this first one is from Nancy, who says, I'm keeping my kids home from school today, but I know I can't keep them home forever. So far, my children don't know anything about the Sandy Hook shootings. I want them to hear it from me instead of another kid at school. How should a parent explain what happened without instilling fear? You've got to tell them about God's plan. You've got to tell them about the fact they have a spirit, and the spirit lives on forever. And the spirit is housed in these bodies, and bodies die. And sometimes they die when you're 10 years old, and sometimes they die when you're 100. But your spirit lives on. And you need to explain to them the fact that when a person dies, if he knows Jesus, he's going to be forever with the Lord in a place that's wonderful. And you need to give them that hope. And so they don't get scared of death, that they, in a sense, welcome it. <laughs> you know, I remember uh, Reagan's daughter said that her father made heaven sound so wonderful that, that she wanted to kill all the little goldfish so they'd go to heaven. <laughs> I mean, it was one of those things. Yeah. But in a sense, that's what you do. You don't, you don't shirk these things. You tell them, and you, but you tell them what really goes on. You don't scare them. That's not scary. You know, it would be probably a really good tool to use for that is Colton Burpo's book, Heaven is Oh, yeah. Real. It's, yeah you're going to like it. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And to talk about what it was like for him, because sure. I think what's, what's so difficult about death is separation well, from loved sure. ones, you okay. know. So to know that you're going somewhere where your family is waiting for you is a good thing. This is Abe who says, does a person really become a Christian by simply saying some magic words and agreeing to some basic principles? No, that's not what happens. You, you have to, your heart has to accept, um, you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. You confess, uh, uh, but you're saved through believing. Uh, you know that old statement about the guy who was pushing a barrel over a wire to Niagara Falls, and he said, who believes that I can do this? And all these hands stood up, oh, we believe, and, okay, you get the barrel. Yeah. <laughs> None of them wanted to do it. So until you're, puts it in perspective, until you're willing it? to get in the barrel and trust the Lord and commit your life to Him, yeah. uh, salvation is not just saying some creedal statement, no way. All right. This is Doug who says, I have a question about John 15, 10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. In light of all the scriptures that promise that we're secure in the hands of Jesus and that nothing can separate us from his love, how do we understand this verse that seems to say, I will love you if you obey the commandments? Well, he doesn't really say. He said, you will abide in my love. You will live in my love. You will dwell. That's what the whole concept of abiding. You will abide in my love as you keep my commandments. It is an ongoing walk. We talk about the walk with the Lord, you know. Which walking. is how we get to know him. It's how we get to know mm -hmm. him. And as we love him, we keep on. It's, it's like saying, okay, uh, you got married. So you made some vows and you kissed the bride and all that good stuff. Yeah. And you never have any communication from then on? I mean, you don't ever talk to each other? Of course you do. I mean, you live together. You, you share things together. It's a walk together. And that's what it is with salvation. You, you walk with the Lord. And, and, and if you continue in my commandments, you will abide in my love. You will live in my love. And my commandments aren't grievous. Okay, what's next? This is Cindy who says, why do I need to go to church? Can't I just worship God everywhere, anywhere I want? You can. Uh, but the Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Uh, there's something about being with fellow Christians, uh, uh, share their pain, their joys, their mm. sorrow, and their, 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 their blessings, and uh, have them with you. And in a sense, how are you going to hear? You have to have some teaching. Somebody's got to teach you about what's there. And there's this insight. A good pastor will have insights into the Scripture that he or she unfolds to you on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. and. You live all by yourself. That's what the problem with some of these cults are. People get off by themselves and they start having these weird dreams. And the next thing you know, you've got a whole new doctrine, and there's nobody to to correct it, no governor. So you need that self-correction that comes about with being with Christians. Don't you think there's something too that comes from setting aside a part of your week just oh, 
yeah, sure. to go and worship the Lord. But you can, I mean, uh, the, the idea was that you don't work. You, you set apart from the Lord. You don't have to necessarily do that in a, quote, a church. church. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, this is Mark who says, what's the difference between having a good, healthy self-esteem and being proud? Can't pride in oneself be a good thing, too? Uh, it can be. Um, I, the Bible is very uh, strict about pride because pride goeth before destruction and a Holy Spirit before a fall. Uh, pride says, I have done it. It's mine. I am the one. I, I, I. That's pride. Uh, and if anybody boasts, let them boast in the Lord, the Bible says. So, I mean, I thank God for His goodness to me. Mm -hmm. And I praise Him for all He's blessed me with. But at the same time, before God, I realize that there's nothing I have that I have not received. He gave me life. He gives me health. He gives me all the material things. It all comes from Him. And there's nothing that I have done that didn't come from God. So if you have pride in the Lord, that's good. But uh, uh, the same thing also is, you know, if you're a, a runner and you can run the 100 meters and nine, two, or whatever, then you may be the fastest in the world. You don't have to say, I'm an old slowpoke. I mean, just say, look, I, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just take it as, a, as an objective fact. I can run the 109, two. So, okay, good. So. <laughs> <laughs>